Welcome to the American Maritime Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Carpenter, Vice President of the American Maritime Partnership. Today, we are very happy to have as our guest, Clark Todd. Clark is the President and CEO of Blessy Marine Services, which is a large family-owned operator of tank barges and towing vessels on the inland waterways of the United States. Clark is also the Chairman of the Board of the American Waterways Operators. Clark, it's great to have you with us. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast today. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks for having me join. I'm uh, happy to be here. Uh, always glad to be back in Washington, D.C. Outstanding. So you are a second generation leader at Blessy. You were named CEO in December. Tell us how that transition has been and how you're feeling about the future, both for Blessy and for American Maritime as a whole. Sure. Yeah. So not a lot has changed with the role. Uh, significantly, um, I changed my, my title on my business cards. Other than that, I've been doing the job for quite some time. Uh, my father-in-law have a great wor uh, working relationship. Uh, we work very well together, very closely for a lot of years. And so there hasn't been much of a transition at all. It's been very smooth. Um, but overall, our industry, I think, is, is on the rebound. Um, as a whole, the maritime industry is recovering from what I would say was the worst economic downturn that we have been faced with when you add COVID in the mix. Um, obviously, the shortage of mariners out there is, is causing a huge struggle for a lot of the member companies that, that uh, we uh, uh, compete against. But the good news is things are looking better. Um, I think that utilization has certainly been the bright shining star over the last couple of months, at least the last quarter. So we're starting to see the nice trajectory that we would hope to see in, in such a downturn. Oh, really good to hear some bright spots on the horizon. So tell us a little bit. Blessy operates on the inland waterways, the Mississippi and Ohio River systems, along the Gulf Intercoastal Waterway. Why is it so important that those routes are served by American vessels and American mariners as opposed to foreign vessels with foreign crews? Sure. I think uh, the, the, the most significant answer to that, Jennifer, is our national security. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, our national security, uh, knowing that we have um, U.S. citizens working in our ports on board our vessels with hazardous cargoes that are going from port to port. Uh, but also the Jones Act um, really preserves the, the job and the markets for uh, the American workers. And so over the last few years, it's been a struggle um, crewing our vessels. Um, you know, I think we see it in all walks of life, whether it's in restaurants, whether it's in hotels, uh, getting folks to come out. Uh, and, and sign up for, for hard labor jobs is not as easy as it used to be. So we're having to spend more time, more energy uh, in, our, in our company and even other companies that we compete head to head against. You know, people are now having to have line items for recruitment. You know, we didn't have a recruitment department at Blessy Marine for the last 45 years. We do today. And it's because of the struggle of trying to find good, hardworking folks, men and women, to come work, you know, oftentimes 242 days out of the year away from their family uh, and on board our vessels. I think the flip side of that that I'm hearing is that there is tremendous opportunity here. And I know that Blessy really prides itself on bringing aboard great people, training them, helping them develop their careers, treating them well. Brag on your folks a little bit. Tell us about the kind of folks who come to Blessy and really make a success there. Sure, the most important thing to us is, is hiring character. You know, we can teach the job, but we like to hire good people, good outstanding citizens, um, and at the end of the day, you know, we can teach the job. So our focus is bringing in men and women, you know, oftentimes 18 years old with maybe a high school education or a GED at best um, and bringing them in at a $35,000 entry level salary on board the vessels and watching their careers really uh, blossom over a period of time. And it's, it's great today as a 45 year old uh, company. Um, we've had employees that have started at, you know, $30,000, $35,000 a year, have worked hard, done all the right things. You know, we put them through uh, Tankerman School and then through Willman uh, School, and they become a full-fledged uh, Willman, making close to $200,000 a year to be able to take care of the family. So most of the companies in our industry have good, good paying uh, wages. We have good benefits. And we also, at Blessing Marine, we really like to celebrate milestones. So it's really important for us at Blessed Marine to celebrate our employees. And every 10 years, we give anniversary gifts. Uh, the most significant one is the 20-year award. And we just recently gave uh, our first 30-year award to one of our Mariners. So pretty special to be able to, to honor those guys, those men and women who are out there working so hard each and every day, away from their families, doing the job uh, that not a lot of people want to sign up for today. 
that is that is really cool stuff. So that person has been with you for two thirds of the company's history. That's correct. Pretty pretty awesome. So I like to call the Jones Act really the the statutory infrastructure of the U.S. maritime industry. Why is that so important to a family owned company like Blessy? It's important because it preserves and protects the jobs for our local communities. You know, most of the time we are going out and recruiting in areas um, around bigger cities. Uh, so they have access to airports because we fly our guys around the country. But the Jones Act really preser pres preserves those jobs for those men and women to come work hard. Like I said, it gives them an opportunity to make a great, uh, a great wage to take care of their families. Also it provides the health insurance piece. Um, at the end of the day, though, you know, the Jones Act is so vital to just American cargo and American commerce that it's important that we as a family business continue to fight for that, uh, whether it be here, uh, the halls of Congress or uh, from a state and local perspective with our uh, uh, local um, state elected officials for them to understand the significance and the value of the Jones Act and what it is and what it allows for us here in the U.S. So Clark, in your role, you spend a lot of time walking the halls of Congress, educating members of Congress and their staffs about our industry and its public policy priorities. What surprises you most when you have the chance to interact with lawmakers and tell them about the domestic maritime industry and the work that we do? I think what surprises me the most when I'm walking around Capitol Hill or even back home at the state and local level is the lack of really knowledge of our industry. You know, we, we like to be the quiet mode of transportation out there. We don't want to be in the media. We don't want to be in the newsprint. Um, but oftentimes I'm, I'm really surprised that most people have no idea how much of our nation's cargoes and how significant our transporting the nation's cargoes are on the inland waterways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kind of an unsung hero, but what a great story to tell and really appreciate the work you do to tell it. Yeah, you know, it is a great story to tell and we have an amazing story to tell. And when I'm walking the halls of Congress, um, I really try hard to make sure that story is told in a very significant and personal manner. Fantastic. Well, I'm so glad that you mentioned safety and environmental sustainability, because I know that in your role, you have spent a lot of time working with the Coast Guard on issues of safety and security and environmental stewardship. Talk a little bit about why the Jones Act is so important to that work. Well, it protect, first and foremost, it protects the mariner. Um, and that's really important when you think about the health and safety of our, uh, of our hardworking men and women out there in the waterways. So first and foremost, it protects the mariner. And secondly, I think what's really unique about it is it gives, it gives companies like ours, family businesses, the protection it needs from intruding uh, other organizations or other businesses outside the country to come in. And what I think is, is um, at the heart of it all is when you think about our industry as a, as a whole, the maritime uh, shipping business, we, are, we were built on the foundation of family businesses. And it's really important for us that, that when we look back and we scrape away all the dust on things that have sat for a while, when we look at what the Jones Act was meant to be and what it means to us as an employer and to our employees, it's absolutely vital that we protect it, we defend it, and at every corner it's gonna continue to get um, you know, stones thrown at its way and try to get chip away, but we, as an industry have done a really good job of the grassroots effort of trying to fend it off. Absolutely, that's really well said. Clark, before we close out the podcast, I wanna give you the chance to uh, raise anything that we didn't get a chance to cover today or anything you wanna dig a little bit deeper on. Please go ahead. Well, you mentioned the word sustainability. Um, obviously it's a word that in our industry we didn't talk about five years ago. I think people are still learning today what that means and what it is gonna mean for us as we live in a post sub chapter M world. Um, so I think one of, the, one of the biggest keys for our success in the future is for us to maintain the viability of, of interstate commerce on the waterways, but understand what sustainability can be and how we can utilize all the tools necessary and all the resources that are available to us today to make us an even greener and safer mode of transportation in the future. So I think we'll, we're going to be hearing quite a bit about sustainability uh, in our realm of the maritime shipping world in, in the uh, months and years ahead. For sure. And, you know, it's interesting. You said we didn't talk much about it five years ago, and I think that's true. But just because we didn't talk about it doesn't mean we weren't doing it. <laughs> that's you know, correct. I love the comparison between greenhouse gas emissions from maritime yeah. and other modes really outperforming today. And what I'm hearing you say is committed to continuing to do that in the future. Well, the commitment is there. And like I've always said, I love to be on the offensive as opposed to the defensive. 
And so what I think what, what I plan on doing with my chairmanship is making sure it's in, in, in front of us and making sure we understand truly what else we can do to be more sustainable and to be greener and to make our mode of transportation the absolute greenest way to go. That's fantastic. Clark, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I'm Jennifer Carpenter. Really appreciate you listening in to today's episode of American Maritime Podcast. Hope that you will share it with others who are interested in a strong American Maritime. Thanks so much. Jennifer Carpenter signing off. Mm-hmm.